Welcome into the door of psychic experience. Ask and you will be given what you ask for. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. For everyone who asks receives. Anyone who seeks finds. If only you will knock, the door will open. And the truth within your higher spiritual self will be revealed to you. Come now with us and go where angels come and you can too. Hello, welcome to the Psychic Experience television show. This is a spiritual metaphysic talk show that is for everyone that's watching. And thank you for tuning in. My name is Reverend Doris Horvath. I'm the pastor of the First Spiritualist Church in San Diego where angels come and so can you any, any time. We are being broadcast all over San Diego. We have four <coughs> series playing all the time in this area. And it's being presented by the First Spiritualist Church in the City Heights area of San Diego. We are a church of angels. Any Sunday morning you can come meet us. Myself, Reverend Doris, the pastor, my assistant pastor, Reverend Marcella Jones. Our ministers are Reverend Celine Clark, the Minister of Healing. And our Reiki master is Reverend Rosie Oberlees. And we have a new <coughs> minister, Reverend Margaret Adler, who works as a psychic reader on the Sundays uh, after church. And we have a lot of activities going on. You can find us in the phone book. I can't give you your, the phone book right now number, but you can get it at the end of the show. We have various different personalities on our show from very many different walks of life and experiences. And they bring to the audience different topics that are very, very interesting and chosen by our church to come on. And I'd like to introduce tonight our person who's going to be talking with me. And I'd like to tell you a sort of a funny story before we get started. I have very clairvoyant dreams. And before our guest was ever asked to be on the show, his name is George Ziegler, I had a dream that I met someone. His name was George. It was a picnic site like Harmony Grove. And he came because he wanted to have a reading, and he was sat down at the end of the table. And my spirit teacher said, well, here we go again. And then George asked me for a reading, and I started reading him with my cards, and as I looked down at my cards, they weren't mine. It seemed like a lady at the end of the table had my cards, and she had mine. So George got up and he walked away and then he came back again and sat down and we had the reading. Then he got up and he walked away and he ended up, there was a door, which you don't think of having a door at a picnic site, but there's a door and a picnic table way in the back of the area and he had this big box and he took out of this box a book and he said he was writing a book. So I looked at the cover and had, it looked like a sort of a collage of all kinds of things on that book, and he said he was writing the book. About three weeks later, he showed up in our church. <laughs> and it was really funny that that happened the way it did. And actually, he really is writing a book, and it's a very interesting book. I would like to tell you that he is writing a book that he says represents a distillation of some of the most profound teachings that exist on the planet. His most passionate goal is to finish that book within two years, not long after create a transition where he spends all his time and energy and passion focused in the areas of communications, personal growth, and spiritual development. He's also a very gifted chess player and he has many of his games that have been actually published and it's on the internet. His undergraduate major was in psychology and for a very long time his greatest personal passion has had a great interest in the personal growth and har harnessing all the powers of the mind. He's lived in San Diego for about 15 years now he has an MBA and is a reverse mortgage business. 
a practitioner and helps mature Americans access their home equity through a special FHA program. I'm going to be asking George some more questions to go along with what I just <coughs> told you about him. But first of all, I'd like to give him an opportunity to say hello to the audience so that you can see him over here sitting next to me. He's going to be our lecturer tonight. This is George Zeigler. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Doris, and thank you for inviting me. It's a great honor to be here this evening. And um, I, especially since I didn't have near as much time to prepare for this as I would have liked to, I would just pray that the Spirit would be here with us and that we would uh, be duly inspired as we, uh, as we speak here this evening. Well, that's not a problem because this show is very spontaneous. Anything can happen and usually does. What I would like to ask you, first of all, is initially you got <coughs> interested in metaphysics and spiritual growth. What got you there? What, what got your interest that made you want to dive into this? Well, that's a great question. On my 21st birthday, I had my very first supernatural encounter. Okay. And I've had many since then. And um, what happened on that particular case was that I was very um, despondent over a series of events that had caused um, a disruption. I had had a scholarship to a college at that time, and the scholarship went away. My oh. parents got very angry at me at the, at the time also because it, uh, it was a military Navy ROTC scholarship, and I just decided I did not want, after all, to go into military. And that upset them deeply, and it caused a deep rift in the family and, and a lot of things. And, and I was very, very despondent on my 21st birthday, so much so that I felt almost like that if uh, I just needed to know that there was a, a broader purpose in the events that were unfolding in my life at that time. And so I, I, I very, very passionately asked God, I said, God, if you're there, I got to know because I just need to know. And, and when I said that prayer, all of this energy entered in through the top of my head, which since then I've learned about chakras and things like that. Mm -hmm. At the time, I had no idea what that was. And so um, from there, um, not only was there warmth but ener and energy that entered in, but a feeling of total love. And I would say a lot of my life since then has been trying to understand that experience. It's interesting that you had this happen on your 21st birthday because <laughs> that's when people have their first Saturn return normally is at the tw between the 21st and the 28th birthday. Really? Because it takes 28 years for Saturn to go around the sun. And at the age of 21, you, you reach your adulthood and that's the best time to break away from the family, which probably is what you did about then, right? I think it was a rite of passage, so mm -hmm. to speak. You know, mm -hmm. in, in our culture, there is no more uh, symbolic time than a man's 21st birthday when, in a sense, he does make that passage from uh, into manhood, you know. It was mm -hmm. a very painful passage, but a mm -hmm. lot of times growth comes through pain. Okay. That's yeah. true. Mm -hmm. Well, what have you done since in the terms of knocking and seeking in that direction? Okay. <laughs> Well, that's a good question. You know, I, I at that time I was uh, introduced to uh, uh, some Christian friends I had that, that had some very charismatic giftings and uh, very inspirational, and I saw they had some things I didn't. So I was uh, <clears throat> I was studying with them for a while, mm -hmm. and um, some scriptures that always just really uh, uh, impressed me deeply are the, uh, is knocking, the door shall be open unto you, seek and you shall find. Right. I take that in a kind of very serious way. And so um, I basically, uh, you might say that um, I've studied a lot of different things. Carl Rogers uh, from the Human Potentials Movement, he would talk about this as in terms of trying to become all of who we really are, which is kind of a mystery in and of itself. Okay. What would you say was your experience of your path through the wilderness of the personal growth okay. for you? 
what would be my path through the uh, wilderness. wilderness? Well, <laughs> whatever <laughs> that is. <laughs> That's a great question. I, I would say that, um, in a sense, it is a path through the wilderness because, you know, we can have an experience of illumination when we experience the higher part of ourselves or we experience the an in, in, influx of the, our God essence or mm -hmm. somehow we break through and we're, we're touching something much larger than anything we've ever touched before. When that happens, we don't understand it typically. It's a brand new experience. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of social reinforcement concerning that, and so it can be kind of confusing. So a lot of my life has been in terms of trying to understand exactly what that means, and, and the study and so on I've, I've done has been along those lines. Did you find when you got to that point that you may have had trouble finding people to talk to that <clears throat> would understand what you're, where you were? Oh yeah, it's it's a very it's a very different way of life. You know, it's just like say the word, for example, says that uh, we live uh, in the world, but not but we're not but not of it. Okay, mm -hmm. so so in a sense, those of us who have this kind of calling upon our lives, in a sense, we're we're set apart. That mm -hmm. doesn't mean we're still in the world, and we're meant to be the salt of the earth and be amidst people and shine our light for others to see. But in terms of like looking for reinforcement in our families, in our schools, and in the traditional social structures that we find ourselves within, it's not so easy to come up, come about sometimes. No, it's not because if you if you start out talking about your experiences, there there's going to be a good chance that you're going to be laughed at. That's so, true. So how does one go into their pathway to seek? their highest and best self when the path is really not marked for you? Well, that's a great question. What, um, what I've done is um, since my 21st birthday, I, uh, I love to read. My major initially in college was English literature. Mm -hmm. And um, since my 21st birthday, when I had uh, my awakening, so to speak, I've read over 500 books. If you consider wow. that, you know, say the average book is probably around 200 pages, that would mean that I've read 100, about 100,000 pages of uh, diverse things, which could include um, things such as the Kabbalah, metaphysics, inner healing, personal growth, um, and, and my, my number one passion, which is communication. Where did you go to college? Penn State for uh, undergrad and uh, GW, George Washington University, for grad school. Okay. Uh huh. Oh, what what were you talking about earlier? I was like to ask what you meant by social reinforcement. By social reinforcement, that would have to do with our schools, our teachers, um, the government. Okay, uh, our parents. See, everyone, um, in a sense, we all have vested interests in one another. We're all moving from point A to point B through life. And as we do it, we're, we're in, in different kinds of uh, networks, which could include relationships with parents, uh, teachers, so on and so forth. It's to a large extent, and especially some higher end kind of control type entities like governments that they like us to do, they, there's kind of like some control issues at stake. And so it's very, very hard to break out of that because to some extent the, the culture lives under a, a mass hypnosis, okay? Yeah, I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. Unfortunately, people uh -huh. don't know they are. <laughs> That's right. A big part of the, the, the game is to, uh, is to help people to see that. Well, that's a job in itself to help people see that. It, it is. No question about that. So what can you do to help people to see the truth? That's a great question. You know, I think that if I was to try to um, distill out the essence of my own answer to that would be that to understand the nature of you know, you know, it's like what it says in the Word that we're created in the image of God, okay? It's also said in the Word that He lives inside of us, okay? That's so, right. Now, in the Bible, okay, and I, I have many different sources I can quote from. I'm just using the Bible today, okay? 
But um, it says that even now, Christ said to one of the thieves on the cross, that even now I tell you, you're seated with me in heavenly places. And what that means is that we exist in multiple dimensions at one time. And that even though like we exist in three dimensions here, if you studied, for example, string theory, you'd see that string theory says there's 10 dimensions and we exist in all 10. And so a lot of what metaphysics is about is learning how to penetrate into those other dimensions. Okay. Well, that is something that is a little bit mind-boggling for most people. For the it's average even, person. Right. But I'm pretty sure that our, our generation that we're in right now is probably in something like the fourth dimension, most of us, and some are maybe trying to go into the fifth dimension, but we don't know that yet. Really? What about neural linguistic programming? Do, have you got into that at all? I have. Neuro linguistics programming is the most powerful communication technology on the planet. Mm -hmm. And um, how does it uh, work? How okay? Um, how does it work? Uh, neuro linguistics programming is basically uh, linguistics stands for language and neuro stands for physiology. So it is has to do with learning how to use both language and your physiology to change your state. What do I mean by change my state? Well, everything we all do, we're either moving towards pain or away from pleasure. And that's the most primal motivation of really all living organisms. So when you learn, what we can learn how to do, see the, the human mind is the most powerful computer in the entire universe. The only problem, it doesn't come with a user's manual. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, we don't so, use it all. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And that's the programming part of neuro-linguistics programming. So it's using language in your, in your physiology to change your state of mind, but doing it in a very conscious, willful way by programming, in a sense, uh, deconditioning ourselves out of the mass hypnosis and um, reprogramming our brains so that we can live truly empowered lives. What is the difference in that <coughs> the left brain versus the right brain of how this is all working? Okay, that's an excellent question. Um, the left brain, that's our, our logic and our reason, okay, and that's the part of our conscious mind that thinks the thought that I'm thinking right now that enables me to speak these words to you as we mm -hmm. have this dialogue. So that's the left brain. The left brain, in a sense, could be compute, compared to a computer screen and it's what's on the computer screen while you're looking at the screen at that moment and interacting uh -huh. with the computer program. However, all you see is the screen, all the power is really inside the computer, and that's your subconscious mind, uh, okay? Yes. And what the, what, what the distillation of what I've learned from my study of, of the psychic experience, quote unquote, <laughs> yeah. is, is that it's really becoming all of we, who we are more than anything else has to do with learning how to basically get leverage on our subconscious mind using our left brain, our conscious thinking skills, to basically reprogram it in an intelligent way directed towards the goals and outcomes that we're, we want to move towards. Okay, and then the right brain is the creative part, that's this visual part of our brain? That's right. The right brain is the subconscious, and the subconscious thinks primarily in terms of images, okay? Words are a left brain construct, and uh, images are the right brain. So we use words and images together, in a sense, to be, learn how to think holistically. I found when I was teaching dream interpretation in my church years ago, a lot of people don't actually see visions in their dreams they just they it's like they're reading a book or something instead they're just left brain when they're dreaming oh really what do you and think they, the cause of that is their right brain they're just not in touch with their intuition at all anymore well i think they had to be trained to open up to that yeah that's what i was trying to do for them yeah okay can you tell me about the differences between some of these people that write Powerful books like Think and Grow Rich and Napoleon Hill, the mastermind factor that they have, that they teach. Um, could I talk about some of the differences yes. between mm -hmm. them? Okay. Well, I think that 
That's an interesting question. I wasn't quite prepared for that <laughs> one, you know, but I'll do my best, I promise. Okay. Um, what I would say, the differences between them, I'm going to speak, I guess, in terms of NLP because NLP would say that the map is not the territory. What that means is we all have internal representations of our experience in the mm. world. All of those experiences are stored in our being, in our subconscious mm -hmm. mind. Not only are the, the memories of those experiences stored, but the emotions are stored with the memories themselves. So that what, um, what I would say in terms of differences, I'm just keen on the word differences here. What I would speak in terms of differences is when we, when we can learn to recognize that the map is not the territory, meaning that our internal representations of our experience are just those, but they're not necessarily reality itself. For example, when someone sees an accident and the police officer interviews 10 different people, they all report 10 slightly different versions of events. That's true. Uh -huh. I saw that happening in my art <clears throat> classes. We had a model and we were all painting this model in the art class. And my teacher said, now I want you to walk around with me and just look and see what these different people are painting. Uh -huh. They're all different. Yeah, yeah. It was so yeah. different that you wouldn't have even known the same model. Sure. We have sure. one last area that we can go into here. Okay, great. If you could tell us real quick here, what exactly do you mean by synergy? Synergy. Syner the actual uh, pronunciation of that word would be synergy. synergy. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'll tie that back into what I just said about uh, recognizing that the map is not the territory. Mm -hmm. Because if we can truly recognize that, that we have maps of reality, but the map is not the same as the reality itself, because there's two different components of reality. There's objective reality, which means basically the laws of physics that govern the laws of form, but then you have subjective reality, which is what's going on inside of our brain and the oh, way that we okay. interpret our experience. In a sense, we could say that the meaning of our experience is the interpretation that we give it. See? Oh, okay. Okay. Uh huh. All right. Yeah. Could you tell me an interesting story that you think that was probably one of your most pronounced, oh, I would say, inside or psychic experience or paranormal sure. experience? Sure, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I would say that the most powerful uh, experience I had in the last, say, for example, 10 years was Christmas Eve about six years ago. And what happened on that day, I had just recently separated from my wife, okay? Uh, my wife and I had built a cleaning business when, together. When we separated, then that dissolved. I also had been simultaneously the branch manager of an ADT alarm dealership, and my uh, dealer I worked for moved out of state, and all those things happened in about a two-week period of time. Wow. Christmas rolled around. I was very kind of like despondent, as you can guess. Of course, you know? too much all at once. <laughs> That's right. I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed. And so what happened, though, see, God will come and meet us okay, in our place of need, if we have faith, okay, I can guarantee yes, and I could true. tell you many supernatural yes. encounters that I've had regarding faith also. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a great story. <clears throat> it sounds to me like it happened right near your birthday, too. It did. My birthday's December 12th, and uh, <clears throat> that's 12-12, uh, which if you break that down numerologically, that comes to 33, which is considered to be the number of a master teacher. And I hope that someday I could evolve into that. Well, it sounds to me like you've got a good start in doing exactly that. Once you get your book going and you know exactly where you'd like to become a teacher or what you're going to teach, and mm -hmm. everything will just happen, I'm sure. I have faith that it will. Yeah, it usually happens that way. You find out what your, your life purpose is, and then you just go for it without doubt. That's what it's all about, really. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. It's about um, becoming all of who we really are, and how does one go about doing that? Well, once you decide what it is, deciding is very powerful. Your decision mechanism, once it's gone into play, that's when you know that you're on the right track. 
That's absolutely correct. There's a term from NLB, NLP called congruency, which means that everything is perfectly aligned synergistically towards the goal that you've set for yourself. That is something I've been thinking about getting into for a long time <laughs> with everything I also have to get into. I really appreciate your being on our television show today. Sure. And I thank our crew members, too, for making all this possible. And as we get ready here to close down, I didn't give you the phone number to the church before so that you can find out George's telephone number. But just call the phone number you're going to see at the end of the show in the credits, and I'll be happy to call you and let you know his phone number is. And just remember our church where angels come, and so can you any Sunday. You want to come meet angels, that's where you come, the First Spiritual Church. God bless you all. Thank you so much for watching. And keep us in your mind. God bless. Until we see you again. Ha, 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 ha.